Hey friends. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about Joyce Carol Oates' short story. Um, where are you going? Where have you been? This is gonna be an explanation of it. So if you watch listen to the reading room or if you read it, you know, independently because you're awesome and didn't have to listen to me read it to you, cool. We're gonna go through it and talk about it. Um, there are some things that are interpreted differently. So I'm gonna give you a few different versions of that. Um, so let's let's first take a look at it. Okay. We are going to look at this website and then we're going to flip over here. Okay. So here's the story. Um, it's about Connie, a 15 year old girl, um, who is totally, she's very vain. She's very into herself. She's, you know, she thinks who she is. She's so pretty. Oh, look at me. Um, she can't stand her mom. She can't stand her sister because her sister is plain and fat and ugly and you know, she works at her high school and oh my God. So anyway, um, now something that's very important about Connie that is mentioned in this first page is that Connie has two sides to her. She has the home version and then the out in public version of herself. Okay, this is something that I know my generation um, was very common. Uh, a lot of girls that I went to school with would shove different clothes in their book bags. They would leave the house looking one way and then when they got to school or got to the bus stop or wherever, they would completely change into something that most likely their parents didn't approve of. Um, so this is very similar to how Connie is, okay? She was meh and very bleh at home. And then when she was out, she was a little more jovial, a little more like, ooh, 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 I'm so, oh, I'm so pretty, yeah. Anyway, um, okay, she really was a very sexual person um, at 15. And I think uh, an interpretation that could be given to that is because Jane or June was so plain Jane about things that didn't do things like that. So she kind of rebelled in that sense. Um, okay, so then we're gonna talk about, she goes to, she goes out with her friends, right? Her friend's dad picks them up, brings them to the movies, but the girls sneak across the street after the dad leaves and drops them off. They go over to um, the hamburger joint across the street to meet up with boys, okay? So now Connie ends up going to eat with this boy named Eddie, which is great. They do at some point eat. However, it's Joyce Carol Oates is just a crafter. Like she just is, at least that's my opinion. She so subtly puts these little, little tidbits of information in there that, you know, they're almost so small. You kind of read over them if you don't, if you're not looking for them. Now, this is my millionth time teaching this story. And every time I do it, I kind of pick up a little, a little something new. Um, so now, Let's see where it says it. Um, here it is. So right here on page two, I believe this is, she says she spent three hours with him at the restaurant where they ate hamburgers and drank Cokes that were in wax cups, always sweating, and then down an alley a mile or so away. Now, okay, um, this story is set back like in the 60s era, um, but there is like a movie version of it that's kind of more in the 90s. Um, late 80s, early 90s, I should say. Uh, this means that, the, yeah, they went and had some food, but then they went and had some sex in the back alley. So, sorry, I guess I should have uh, trigger warning this whole thing. I don't really know how that works. Um, but anyway, they do go off and have sex with each other. Um, and then she meets up later with her friend again, who they both say that, you know, you should know how the movie was. <laughs> but they both were doing the same thing. They had met up with different people, did their own thing. That's why it says that they were, um, they rode off with the girl's father, sleepy and pleased. Okay, so there is our, our very subtle hints, okay? We have all these paragraphs about it and then just two sentences about that, okay? So she really is a very sneaky craftsman in putting these little details in there that lead up to the bigger point of the whole story, okay? So anyway, so this happens a lot um, that they would go off and and do this and kind of gallivant and, you know, be a little, little okay, if you will, um, but that's okay. All right. So then there's something about this Pettinger girl and Connie says, oh, that dope. Now I'll, I'll talk about this after. Um, uh, that's okay. I mean, I had to think about it real fast. Okay. So that, that does go back to something. Um, anyway, so her family decides one Saturday or Sunday to go Sunday to go to a barbecue and Connie is like, not for me, fam, not going. Um, she decides not to go, which is 
pretty typical of a teenager, you know, doesn't really want to be involved in the family scene, wants to do their own thing. And at 15, you're kind of like, okay, you know, your parents are like, you're old enough, you're fine, you're going to be fine on your own. We're just going to a barbecue at your aunt's house. Like, we're not going far, we're not going long. Okay. Now, this is where it starts to begin to divert into two different interpretations of this story. Okay. So there is one interpretation that it is a reality. And the other interpretation is that this is a dream. Okay. And this is where we're going to start. It's going to start with this next program, um, this next paragraph, sorry, of the musical program Bobby King is playing. Okay. That this, this music lulls her to sleep and it starts this dream sequence. Okay, now the other part of it is that it is strictly um, reality, like this is actually happening to her. Okay, so she hears the car coming up the driveway and it just so happens to be the car she saw when she was walking with Eddie to go get food and you know, some other things um, the other night, okay? This guy had in his gold car had marked an X, okay, kind of like X marks the spot um, or like, you know, the treasure chest is, at the X or something like that. I don't know, however you want to look at that. Um, okay, this car, this gold jalopy comes up the driveway. And now she's like, oh shit, what do I do? Um, it comes out and he, he is very presumptive. He's very assertive. He's very aggressive in his manner. And he's also very confident. He says, I'm not late, am I? And she's like, what the fuck are you doing now? And he's like, oh, for our date. I told you I was going to be here. Okay, now if that's not a pickup line, ladies, I don't know what it is. I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, so he, he very, you know, presumptively says like, I told you we were going to go for a ride. Today's your day that you set aside to be with me. I know that you washed your hair just for me, which is wonderful. And he says, I thank you, sweetheart. Like that was so nice of you. Okay. So, um, she describes him at first, you know, that he has, he has this shaggy and shabby black hair, but it looks crazy like a wig. That's very important. Again, we're going to have these very minute details that Oates sprinkles into this whole piece to give us a big picture of what's happening, okay? That he looks like he's wearing a wig. That's something to just notice, okay? There's some dialogue. It's great. And then we move to the car, okay? So now she really notices the car and says, what's all that stuff that's on your car? And says, Arnold Friend. Oh, Arnold Friend, yeah. Arnold Friend, no. <laughs> Okay, we're going to do something called an anagram. I'm going to stop sharing this screen and we're going to do a new share real fast. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I think I'll write it, I guess. Um, we're going to write it and I want it to be a different color. Okay, so, oh, what the hell? Sorry, guys. Let's try this again. I'm trying right here. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with my mouth, or my mouse, rather, Arnold. Arnold, friend, okay, that's who he is. I'm gonna then get my eraser. Now, this is something that is really fun to do for me because I don't know why. If we get rid of the doubles, okay, so there is clearly, there's two R's, there's two N's, and there's two D's. However, the N's and D's don't really do much for us. But if we take away the R's, we now have, I want to do a different color now, red, draw, an old fiend, okay? As we go further into our story, she realizes that he is much older than he was because again, it looks like he's wearing kind of a mask. I know that that's a really bad, sorry guys. Um, let's see if I can make a better line. Okay, there we go. All right, an old fiend, okay? We could always take away the first R and say an old, an old friend, um, but I don't really think he's meant to be a friend, okay? So we're gonna start there real fast. And then he also goes on to do some numbers for us. We're gonna do this in black as well. 33, 19, 17, okay? So he has a, there's a smiley face with sunglasses. It's supposed to be him on the side of his car. There's uh, something else written that says, um, done by crazy woman driver. And then there's this code, this secret code. And he points it out to Connie. And that's very important that he is, he's very like, hey, you see this? This number sequence is a secret code, and I'll let you in on it maybe later, 
but not right now because like I can't tell you right now because what I'm about to tell you might be like I don't this is also my favorite part okay so we also know that Connie is 15 okay Connie's 15 all right now here is a working theory this can this is my working theory. This is not, I have not found this anywhere online. I don't know. Um, Dr. Oates, Professor Oates, uh, she works at Princeton in New Jersey. Um, she did not comment to my tweet. And I asked her about these numbers because I want to know if I'm right. Uh, so that's rude. I find that rude. She didn't answer me. But anyway, so we have our first number here that is um, Connie's age, okay? We have Connie's age right there, all right? Then obviously two years is 17, two more years is 19, and then we got 33. Well, we're gonna say, you know, throughout the essay later, she finds out or she realizes that Mr. Friend is not her age and is not 18. He is much older, okay? So let's just go with him being the age of 33, okay? Now, let me see if I can draw an arrow. Okay, so we're gonna say that Arnold Friend is 33 years old, all right? Connie is 15. Okay, so there's a good, I don't know, what is that, 18 year difference, okay? Like he could have birthed her. Anyway, I digress. Um, obviously him not really, but you know what I mean. Uh, so with that being said, okay, this story is actually based very loosely, but it draws some inspiration from a real life serial killer named Charles Schmidt, maybe it's pronounced Schmid. I don't know, S-C-H-M-I-D. Um, he had a friend that would accompany him on these uh, killings where they would kidnap girls that were around this age and this teen age, okay? And they would, they would drive them out to a field or to um, a canyon, I can't remember because I think this was out in Arizona in the 80s. Um, uh, and they would, you know, they would, rape and kill them, okay? So here is my theory, okay? Connie is not his first. 19 year old over here was his first. Oops, I don't want the arrow, I want the circle, sorry. Okay, I think that the 19 year old was his first and I think the 17 year old was his second, which makes Connie his third. Now, I'm gonna leave this up for a millisecond real fast. Then we switch back over right now to the story. Um, shoot, sorry guys, hold on. Show screen, story, okay. So right here, okay, 33, 19, 17. So 33, we're gonna assume is Arnold Friend's age. 19 was the first person that he abducted. The 17 year old is maybe the next person. And now 15 is Connie, okay. Um, now we mentioned also Nancy Pettinger. We don't know what happened to her. Um, that does go back to the Charles Schmid person. Um, the real story that is inspired by that, I believe the name is very similar to the person that went missing. Um, anyway, we're gonna continue on, okay? So she starts to see that everything about him is a little fake. She mentions a few times that his feet don't seem like they fit in his boots, that maybe he's not as tall because it, his ankle is bent weird and it just looks like, like things are not right in his shoes. Um, she starts to look at his face and how it's like he forgot to, to put makeup on his neck because they didn't match. Um, you know, and at first she was kind of attracted to him because of the way that that Oates writes her admiring um, Arnold Friend's body that he dressed the same way as all of them. Tight jeans stuffed into black scuffed boots, a belt pulled to his waist to show how lean he was and that there's muscles on his arms. He's very muscular. Then all of a sudden his nose is hawk-like. And it's sniffing like she's going, he's going to gobble her up. And it was all a joke. Okay. And now we're going to keep, we're going to keep going. Okay. Um, as we move on right now, I'll give you the trigger warning. Now things are going to get a little unpleasant in uh, the, the reality or dream version of this interpretation. However, you feel like looking at it. Um, the music that is constantly happening in the background is supposed to create that dreamlike uh, state. Okay, that's supposed to be the um, identifier for it being a dream, if that's how you would like to look at it. It keeps coming back to the music. The music is constant. It's always present, okay, which many people 
interpret it being that it's a dream, okay? Um, he knows everything about her too, but doesn't say how he found out. So again, that could be part of a dream. Um, Connie has is clearly trying to be older than she is by being this hypersexual being going out with multiple men at, you know, um, in alleyways and such to meet up with them and have sex. So is this now like, is her conscious, if this is dreaming, trying to tell her like, you need to stop doing this because this is the possibility that can happen? Or is it a consequence of her reality that you're, you're putting yourself to act like this and this is what happens? Um, okay, so you know, she says, you're not around here. And he says that, you know, I'm a friend and what are you thinking about? You know, he keeps trying to kind of divert her attention to other things and not so much the looking at him and trying to recognize him. She says that he's a little familiar, but can't really, can't really place him, doesn't know where, you know, they're from. She also has the doorway in between them to act as a barrier, okay? So that could also be the, the doorway could represent the, the reality from the dream, if that's how we want to look at it, or, you know, her childlike nature to what's about to happen pushing her into adulthood, if that's how we want to look at it, okay? Doors are meant to be transitions um, in, you know, in reality, in our waking life in general. And then they also signify that transition as well in a lot of literature. Okay, that's why she, she's dawdling in doorways because she doesn't quite know where she wants to go. She's, she's really in that in-between age at 15 of transitioning from girlhood to being a woman, okay? Um, so that's, that's kind of that representation there um you know and he's he's using that door handle to hold himself up if we look here okay um that, that can go to that transition he's trying to kind of pull her closer to it um okay can't you see i'm a little older she says that he looks 30 and then when she finally sees ellie he notices that he's kind of like 40 and she's like what the hell is happening here um his erratic behavior towards Ellie also suggests that he is not totally with it. Um, but, you know, I'm going to keep going. Okay, so here it is. You know, it looks like he's wearing a wig. We don't know what's happening. And then, you know, they start to get into it that you need to come outside. I'm not going to come in the house. You need to come out of the house. Uh, I'm only going to come in the house if you go and touch that phone. If you choose to touch the phone, I'm coming in. He's very clear about his rules. He will not come in, but he also says that your house is simply a box a box that I could knock down, a box that I could burn down, and you'll come running out to me. Ooh, you got me Hi, bud. Thank you. Kiss him up. Mommy, look. <gasps> wow. Um, yes, you can have some of my milk, Shree. I like milk, I know you do. I like the chocolate milk. Okay. Why don't you go put, go put that away, and then you can have a sip. You can take your shoes off. And I'll finish up my video, okay? Okay. Um, so again, she says that he's not going to come into the house unless she touches the phone. This is this is said multiple times, and there's reason that it's said multiple times um, because he is very clear with it. So she says she's going to call the police. And, uh, anyway. The house is just a box that he could burn down, knock down, kick down, whatever. Anything that she's inside, he is going to get her to come out. Okay, so maybe that's the whole, like, I'm going to get you to transition from childhood to, or girlhood to womanhood. Um, it could be however you want to interpret that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Don't lock the door. She attempts to suddenly lock the door. Now, here's a question that many people always ask. Why not just lock the door in the first place? Why did you even go to the door when you heard the car coming up the driveway? Once you saw that it wasn't someone you knew, why didn't you just stay in the house and ignore it like the rest of us? Don't know. Anyway, um, I guess because if she had done that, we would not have this story. Okay. Um, so now I gotta find the right Um I'm trying to find where he says this. I think it's somewhere. Shoot, now I can't find it. When he says he's going to come in the house. Sorry, guys. Sorry. 
Oh, here it is. Okay, sorry. It's on page six, at the very end. It says, yes, I'm your lover. You don't know what that is, but you will. I know that too. I know all about you, but look, it's real nice. And you couldn't ask for nobody better than me or more polite. I always keep my word. I'll tell you how it is. I'm always nice at first. The first time I'll told, hold you so tight. So you won't think you have to try to get away or pretend anything because you'll know you can't. And I'll come inside you where it's all secret and you'll give in to me and you'll love me. Okay, so now this part is very particular to having sex. Okay, so he says, I will come inside you. Yes, that is quite literal. Okay, um, obviously we know the secret um, and she's going to give it up and she's going to love him. He's a little delusional, a little bit, a little on the price side, um, but he's also making it sound like he is going to treat her so well that she's not going to want to leave. Okay, so that's when she starts saying like, you are crazy and people don't talk like that, um, which both are true. Yes, okay. So now he says, you know, that's when he starts saying, like, it's just a box, it's just a screen door. I can come in if I want to, but I'm not because I'm a gentleman. Um, but don't if you touch the phone, I'm not coming in. Okay, so now she goes to touch the phone, and I can't find where it is. Sorry, guys. Ah, okay, so she then, you know, he said she says to him, What are you gonna do? And he says, just two things, or maybe three, but I promise it won't last long. And you'll like me the way you get to like people you're close to, which when you think about it, sometimes people you're close to, you know, like her mother, she really doesn't care for. Her. Okay. Um, so he also gives her kind of like that ultimatum, like make you decide, not an ultimatum, but you know, I suddenly can't think of the threat. You don't want to hurt your family. If you don't do what I want, you're going to, I'm going to hurt your family. Um, so right here, this, this paragraph again, okay? So again, this is where Oates is really crafty in getting a big thing, a big uh, part, a big moment in very few words. Okay, so she, she writes, she began to scream into the phone, into the roaring, she cried out, cried out for her mom. She felt her breath start jerking back and forth in her lungs as if something Arnold friend was stabbing her with again and again. This particular two sentences, he has now entered the house because she touched the phone, okay? You have to remember, and this is where that inference and reading between the lines comes into play. So she went and touched the phone. So now he has entered the house, okay? She entered the house. She, uh, he entered the house. She touched the phone. He then, you know, kind of wrestles with her. Uh, you can interpret it as he rapes her or you can interpret it as he mock rapes her however you want to look at it, okay? It's very different views, but she is still crying. Um, she's still wailing. She is very sad. However, she ends up leaving the house because of this moment that he has now already made it happen, but he still says that I'm going to make it, you know, the first time is going to be the best with me and whatever. Um, but then he, his whole his voice changes and she says that it's a gentle loud voice it's like stage voice so it's completely different from his old voice now the place where you came from ain't there anymore okay that that's a girlhood a childhood and where you had in mind to go is canceled out because now she has entered reality so it's like what we think about what we daydream about our future is gone because she has now entered the real world okay the place you are now inside your dad's house is nothing but a cardboard box i can knock it down anytime because he just did okay, that that house is not safe. Um, you know that, you always did know it, and now you really know it because I did it. Okay, so then he says, we're gonna go out to a nice field, and this is that Charles Schmidt part coming back, okay, that inspiration for the story coming back in about the Pied Piper of Tucson, that was his nickname, by the way. Um, they're gonna drive out now to a field, and he's gonna either carry out the task of, of raping and murdering her or just hanging out with her. I don't really know you know, again, it's your interpretation of things. Um, and then he says, very delusional, like my sweet little blue eyed girl and Oates writes that she has brown eyes. So he is clearly a little off his rocker. Um, and she realized that this is where she's going and this is it. So what do you guys think of the story? Tell me your interpretations and hopefully you enjoyed the story and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye guys.